My name is Erica, um, and I am the uh, original developer of Tippecanoe, and uh, have the pleasure to have been maintaining it again for the past uh, year or so. It felt. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Tippecanoe, I'd, or maybe maybe you all are, but um, it is a command line tool for making uh, vector tiles for web maps. Um, and it takes sort of an, an unusual approach compared to some other sorts of tools uh, that, uh, that do more or less the same thing. Um, and it's because it, it really originated as a data visualization tool more than a cartography tool. Um, and, you know, has, has turned into something with many cartographic purposes. But um, the, the original intent of it was to allow me to make dot density maps like this. Um, you know, with hundreds of millions of points on them, which is not exactly, you know, the normal GIS kind of approach to points of interest or something, or city labels or that sort of thing. Um, and so, um, you know, owing from this, from this original, uh, original intent of Tippecanoe, there are a few principles that, uh, you know, I don't know if I explicitly stated them early on, but um, these are kind of what I see as the essence of Tippecanoe now. Um, First of all, to be able to accept as many as much data as you have, um, you know, some people joke about the like, you know, denominating the progress indicator in millions of features, but that really was the uh, was the intent to be able to you know put millions of features into it instead of these relatively small data sets that uh, that so many actual um, GIS things are. Um, and then once you've got all that all that data, make it look like all the data is present in every zoom level, even though it can't actually be. Um, and uh, you know the sort of the at the same time as as trying to make it look complete, still make the tiles small enough that they load quickly over the network, render quickly, and and so on. Um, and also just do it automatically. Don't make the user have to make decisions that the computer can make better than the user could. Um, and so the 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 sort of basic things that Tippecanoe does to accomplish these purposes. Um, first of all is uniform dot dropping by zoom level. Um, you know, most, uh, most tile making programs assume that you know what sort of data you're putting in, you know what zoom level is appropriate to show it at, um, that sort of thing. Tippecanoe takes the approach that like, you just want to see all the, see all the dots. And, and even when you, uh, when you um, zoom out to still make it look like you see all the dots. Um, and in this particular case, this is uh, this is some maps of tweets and uh, tweet locations, and um, you know there there are definitely not as many definitely not as many uh, points in the version on the right that is the more zoomed out version of the map. But it's still you know each each step in between still looks basically the same. You're not supposed to notice that there are features that are dropping out. Um, for uh, and you know so very quickly we um, the use cases for Tippecanoe move beyond just uh, just point data. Um, it also does the you know standard lines and polygons. Um, for polygons, the technique that it that it has to make things work at the low zooms is what I've taken to calling polygon dust, where you know some of, some of these features are quite large and they actually you know are the are basically the closest approximation to the to the feature that can be shown at the. Um, you know, at this level, um, but many of these other things are not. They're they, you know, the, the the size of an individual pixel at the zoom level is larger than the size of a house, and so the um, you know all of these other things that are that are filling the non downtown areas, non industrial areas, are basically statistical statistical approximations to to features rather than the features themselves. Um, and then you know for other other types of data. It can't necessarily all fit. It can't even necessarily look like it all fits, but Tippecanoe still has the make the tiles work philosophy. Um, and so in this case, um, you know, basically trying to show every block face in Los Angeles um, on a map, not all of them are actually, can actually be shown at the scale, um, but it tries to show, you know, the largest features to, um, to make it look like, uh, make it look as much like the original data as possible, um, and then you can zoom in to see the, you know, the real, real full data. Um, the other thing I, I mentioned, you know, trying to trying to keep the user from having to make decisions about it. People are really bad at choosing what the maximum zoom level for their tile sets should be. People tend to choose much, much deeper zoom levels than is actually appropriate, which means that they, you know, spend a lot of time making tiles that they get uh, much larger tile sets than they um, than they really need. Um, and so Tippecanoe will will choose a zoom level for the map based on the 
either the you know the median distance between the features or the median distance between uh, vertices within features, um, with the intent being that you should be able to tell all the features apart and be able to see the uh, you know the the line and and polygon features with uh, as something close to their intended resolution. Um, these things all make Tippecanoe sort of a natural use, or sort of a natural for the use case we put it to at Felt, um, which is for our upload anything feature, um, which you know basically gives the user no opportunity to say anything about their file. Um, there's no configuration; just drop your file in, and we will try to make it into something that displays nicely. Um, there's none of this like saying, you know, specifying filters, specifying. Uh, uh, unioning anything like that, just put the file in. Um, and we do this for our own data layers too. It's not just user layers. Um, so all of these, all of these sample, um, you know, sample sample uh, layers that you can use on your maps, um, all went through the same data pipeline as as user uploads do. Um, and so that, that you know that's sort of a good test case for hopefully uh, show, hopefully making the, the user pipeline do you know what people want it to do because if, if it works for us it's probably going to work reasonably well for other people um, there are however a lot of things that uh, that came up in the course of um, that have come up in the course of year of the last year where um, things do not actually work necessarily as well as people would like them to do um, one of the particular things that uh, particular headaches was one of our internal data sets which um, is a uh, a set, a set of point data of all the wineries in the United States, um, and um, you know the the thing is that the when you're when you're when you're making assumptions based on the median distance between features, um, that doesn't really take into account that some areas of the map are much much denser than others, um, and in particular um, there are a few counties in California that have tremendous numbers of wineries, and then other parts of the uh, other parts of the country that. Uh, have very few, um, and so one of the um, you know things that we tuned was um, was to make the maximum zoom guessing take uh, clustering into account, so that so that rather than just looking at the um, the distance between features, it's also using the uh, standard deviation of it to try to um, keep the densest areas still uh, still distinguishable. Um, and the flip side to that is that. Many of these other data sets, um, as you zoom out, would look too sparse um, at the low zoom levels. Um, in some cases, that was because the maximum zoom was too high. In other cases, it was just because the uh, the the um, you know the way the data was clustered would also would also um, mask things. And so um, we've also made adjustments to the uh, to the way the drop rate is is calculated, um, basically be just based on eyeballing uh, several data sets to say like you know does this look right and and reverse engineering a, a formula for what makes it look right um, which is you know not the most satisfying way to, to derive your your formulas but um, at some level this really is an aesthetic decision more than a correctness decision uh, you know we want that we want the maps to look good basically and hopefully if they look good then they also contain all the all the things you might want to see um, one of the perennial problems, uh, even with that, was um, alignment between layers. Um, this particular case is uh, the planned um, rapid transit stations in Honolulu. Um, I believe the system actually just opened, but these these stations don't actually exist yet. Um, but you know, one of the one of the layers is the points that represent the you know station names, and the other one is polygons that represent the footprints of the stations. Um, and in this case, just being able to tell the points apart is not sufficient. That can create some some pretty severe misalignment. Um, and so we also um, do a little bit of trickery behind the scenes to um, to create higher resolution um, tiles than uh, than you normally would with map with web maps. Most web maps have you know 4,096 unit tiles at, at every zoom level. Uh, we generate lower resolution tiles at the low zooms because you can't see the difference anyway, and uh, we generate as high a resolution as we can at the maximum zoom so that so that we get as much precision as possible. Um, 
another thing that helped with these with this alignment between between uh, between layers um, was changing the behavior of Tippecanoe to round coordinates rather than truncating them. Um, the you know prior to making this change, um, these, this is a hiking trail of some sort, and um, you know the the uh, the zoom level of the of the uh, of the line representation of it is not the same as the, as the zoom level of the, the point representation. And as a result, um, in the original version of this, you would see all the points sort of looking up and to the left of, 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 where, they, of where the lines were, were showing up. Um, and by uh, doing proper rounding for the coordinates, this looks a whole lot better than it used to. Um, one of the other things that we ran into is that um, even though the honest thing to do when you are creating the low zoom levels, uh, you know, I would I would consider the honest thing to be a spatially uniform dropping of features. Um, um, but in practice, this actually creates um, some misleading impressions in some cases. Um, and in particular, this uh, this data set is locations of oil wells in California, um, and the person who made it complained that. Um, you know, the version on the left made it look like there were many areas of the state that didn't have any oil, any oil wells in them at all, um, because so many of them are clustered in, in one location in the Central Valley. Um, and so we've made an adjustment um, that basically lets you specify a percentage, well, in, in the felt case, we do it automatically. If you're using Tippecanoe on the command line, you have to make your make your own choice about what you want. Um, basically, just say, you know, how many of the features at lower zoom levels should be from the sparsest areas, and how many should just be a a um, a, a, a uniform um, feature dropping. We currently use uh, sixty percent sparse features, forty percent. Um, 40% uniform features, and that, uh, you know, even though even though it's perhaps not the not the more honest thing, um, you can't actually see all the points on the more honest version of it, and so this probably gives a more realistic impression of the the overall distribution of of oil wells. Um, there were also a few things that were just weird edge cases that hadn't come up before, like for instance, the uh, the max zoom guessing in Tippecanoe just did not support data sets with only one point in them, because the only thing you know about a point, you know, it has no inherent magnitude, it has no inherent, um, you know, inherent uh, level of precision. Um, the only thing we really know about points is how far away they are.